Last week's program, I dealt with homosexuality. And I told you in that program that this week I was going to read to you from an article written by a man uh, that was published in Charisma uh, magazine. I'm not sure if it made it in the magazine. It was in one of their online uh, magazines. I hope it made it in the magazine because it was really good. The guy who wrote the article, and I'm still on the topic of homosexuality and the sin that it is, and last week I covered the ground that it's not a worse sin than other sins. It's not worse than adultery or, or being a liar or a fornicator or a killer. Or, it's not worse than that. But the problem today is people are unwilling to call sin, sin, and that's why I'm talking about this. And people lie and say that that's, if that's what you're doing, you can never get free from it. Well, this guy that I'm about to share his words with you, he was in the homosexual lifestyle for, thir for 10 years, and for 34 years he's been free. And the article at the end talks, uh, gives him some creds, so I'll share some creds. It's, his name is David Kyle Foster, and by the way, I'll bet you some of the news people, if his, because he made a, there's a movie coming out called Such Were Some of You, which has 29 former, former homosexuals who expose the facts about homosexuality and its causes and how the Lord set them free. This movie is coming out soon. It's a two-hour documentary. I want to see it. I'm going to have to find out where it's at or buy it and show it to the church or something. But it sounds really good. But the problem is when the, the liberal news media who are big on uh, making sure homosexuals don't feel uncomfortable by us holiness preachers, when they find out somebody has been freed from it, and if that person becomes powerful and influential, I can just predict they'll make it their business to find out some dirt on that person. And if you look long enough, you're going to find dirt on anybody, 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 all the way from anything. Getting mad at your husband at the restaurant. Oh, sure. Yeah, I heard her. Raise her voice. She can't be sincere. She's a hypocrite. Yeah, right. <laughs> For the record, when I do anything like that, I'm quick to repent because I love my husband and want to honor him. But I'm just saying, people that are looking to discredit a message will examine the messenger. And if they find any dirt on them, they will let you know as if somehow that negates their entire testimony because they got caught not being perfect. Please, saints and everybody else, stop doing that. That's just immature and ridiculous. But this guy is a graduate now of Trinity Evangelical Divinity School and Trinity School of Ministry. His autobiography, which I'd also love to read, is called Love Hunger, has just been released by Chosen Books. You can probably get it on Amazon or something. Love Hunger by Chosen Books. You're going to get his full testimony on there. He's the author of Sexual Healing and Transformed into His Image. He's also the executive director of Mastering Life Ministries and producer director of the movie I was alluding to, Such Were Some of You. So you might want to look up some of those things on the web. The name is David Kyle. Foster, F-O-S-T-E-R, so you can read some more of his testimony. And for him to, to boldly share it, like I said, that is bold, because you better believe somebody's going to be all on his case. A sideline. Evidently, Coach Dungy mentioned he wouldn't have been real comfortable with a homosexual on his team if he had, were presented with that option. News is all over him like he did something bad. Come on, we're talking locker room here. Do you want a girl, a woman, a young lady in there in various stages of nudity? Especially some of these guys who might be married. Do you think the wives? Want, well, if, if somebody's homosexual, you don't think it's possible they'll be attracted to some of the other guys and there's sexual tension going on? What coach wants that mess? I wouldn't. Okay, add me to your list, folks. 
I'm not important enough for you to add to a list. Coach Dungy is. I'm glad he spoke up. He's a born-again Christian, and he's bold. God bless him. Pray for that man so he remains bold and just looks at all those reporters and go, oh, for crying out loud, find something important to do. I'm serious. Christians, we have to be less uh, intimidated and silenced. This is ridiculous. Sin is sin. Uh, the guy right now who's managing, I believe he's in the sound room, managing the control board, Richard, our, our deacon, Richard Meninga, I put this article on the web, and one of his responses to it was, isn't it strange people say, gay Christian, but you never say, hi, I'm Ted, I'm an adulterous Christian. People don't, hi, I'm a thief Christian. Nobody ever makes their first name their sin. Come on, get real, and there's nothing gay about being gay. You can get real about that right now, too. I don't know why we let people steal that word. 1964, gay men happy. Now we can hardly use it for fear it'll be misunderstood. I'm a little bit upset about that. I liked that word at one time. And I take back the rainbow, too. That belongs to all of us. It doesn't belong to the gay community. You are hereby notified you're, you're making restitution to community. <laughs> anyway, this man, he said, some suggest, and I'm going to paraphrase some things. You look up the article yourself. I just told you how to get it. Look it up in Charisma, too. The partial one, and then the other one, Love Hunger, put out by Chosen Books. You can, get the, you can get a whole lot of stuff about them. But he said, some people suggested he must not ever have been homosexual. See, that's the next thing. If I say I've been delivered from homosexuality, the next thing the liberal press is going to say, obviously, he was never one in the first place, because that's impossible. He writes... Does sleeping with over a thousand men count? Wilt Chamberlain said in his book, he slept with a thousand women. I can't even imagine. Well, then you got Solomon. Okay, that's another topic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he said, yes, I was one. And he never wanted to be one. It was just there. And check this. He just tells it like it is. I'm going to lift some of this word for word. It's coming from a man who, by the way, is extremely compassionate towards people still caught up in that lifestyle. He's not saying you're a bunch of retards because you ain't got no sense to come out. There's no tone like that. It's more like I came out, now I'm free, you can be free too. And that's what I say about my lifestyle as a hippie. I came out of all everything that went with that lifestyle, and I'm free. You know, it's, it's whatever addiction or lifestyle that displeases God, you can be free. But he mentions, he said, I saw the narcissism and arrested emotional development all around me and in me. Hey, I'm telling you, he tells it like it is. He said, I'm quoting this guy. <laughs> he said, guys flitting around like Peter Pan sometimes were cute and funny. You know what? In the natural, I feel the same way. I had a guy do my hair one time in San Diego who was obviously gay. It was downtown San Diego. And he was just the nicest, funniest, sweetie. He felt like a girlfriend. You know, very sensitive. What is it with that demonic cluster that attacks people that walk in that lifestyle? You know, do you know that all over the world it's the same walk, same expressions? talking about the feminine side. I can't always detect the one that's the masculine side. I'm talking about the feminine side. It is just, in the same sensitivity, it is the strangest thing, but it's like that whole cluster of demons is easily recognized. I was just in Europe. It takes me two seconds to, I've got gay radar. How do they call it? Gaydar? But to me that says, you're dealing with the same cluster of evil spirits that manifest themselves. They're laughing at you. They're like, this guy was born a man, and I've turned him into a, um, acting like a woman. He, the enemy wants to destroy. He hates you. Do you know he hates you? Anyway, I'll get back to what he's saying. The next thing he recognized, now he did this for 10 years, and for 34 years he hasn't, so... For f we're going back 44 years, and you've got to assume he was at least in puberty when he started out, so now he must be my age or so, 65 or whatever. But anyway, he was recognizing that it was youth and beauty among the gay community that was driving everybody in everybody's bed, and he realized there was a shelf life to this thing, and that began to bother him. Plus, he was 
let me quote him directly again, noticing the epidemic of perverse sexual behavior is commonly practiced and celebrated. <coughs> and he didn't want anything to do with them. Do you have any kind of lifestyle or habit that now you've gotten to the point you're going, this is nasty, I don't want to do this anymore. If, if that's you, just cry out to God. God can deliver you like he did this guy. And then he goes on to say what I said in the last program. We're not designed to be with same sex. We're designed for male with female. Um, I want to say, too, because he mentioned that um, marriage is a picture between Christ and his bride, the church. And I think that's the reason the devil hates marriage between a man and a woman. If he can't get you through divorce, he'll get you through perversion. And even if you are married and you get lost in pornography, the devil's just laughing because here we're supposed to be a, a picture of the pure love and devotion between Christ and his church. And the devil comes along, sprays graffiti all over you, and you don't even recognize it as demonic graffiti um, dishonoring. Romans 1 says dishonoring your body. He goes on to talk about there's an idea floated around by homosexuals that God created people to be homosexual. His take is on that is, yeah, about as much as he created somebody to be a drug addict. That wasn't his plan. And he mentioned, too, uh, the sin nature that pulls us strongly in various destructive direction. I'm going to read, quote, this part. Homosexual behavior born from a complicated convergence of our fallen nature idolatry, rebellion, temperament, environment, experiences, and developmental factors is just one more way that happens. He's not saying um, there's no good reason for you to be this way. You know, speaking naturally, he's saying there's a whole list of things that could have happened to you. It could be something that's in the family, just like there's alcoholics in the family. Some families have quite a few uh, homosexuals in them. Maybe grandma or grandpa did something perverse and, and it's never been repented of and so the family just didn't think anything of perverse sexual behavior. Who knows? Maybe somebody abused you. There's a lot of people I've heard are homosexual, have told me they're homosexual, and then they, well, not a lot, like five, okay, but I'm saying some stories that I've heard, it springs from some abuse they've had by a man when they were in puberty. And something, you know, sometimes when you're abused, on the one hand you feel violated, but on the other hand there's some pleasure in it. And maybe, like he talks about love hunger, maybe there was a hunger to be held that got fulfilled in that. So you go along with the being held and courted, even though you don't like this behavior over here, you're willing to put up with it for the sake of being courted by the older gentleman or gentleman, the older nasty doggish man who's messing with you. Why did I say gentleman? That was dumb. Sorry. Anyway, then he says to the homosexual, it can seem unfair that God would allow such intense desire. I never thought of that. When I was being promiscuous as a hippie, it never occurred to me that somehow it was God's fault that I was full of lust. I knew that God had deliverance, but I was choosing in 1968 to give in to lust. I mean, just give in to it. Just, you know, like when you finally get off your diet and you decide to have a day when you just have all the, you have a Sunday and then you go get an eclair and then you go, that's not God giving those desires. That's the enemy wanting to mess up your body again. You know, God doesn't give you those intense desires. It comes from your fallen nature, and you have to war. And he agrees that when you start to war against that, it's just as rough as when you, you're an alcoholic and you decide to quit. You're a drug addict. You decide to quit. Even if you're a fornicator. But <laughs> I know this person that, wasn't, um, that just liked to flirt, even though he's married. And he got delivered of the spirit that was driving him. And he turned to his wife and said on the way to a party, what do you do at a party if you can't flirt? Literally, he got all that fun out of flirting. And it took him a long time to realize it's not of God. And you need to get some deliverance and prayer here. 
And at first it's like, what do I do now? My whole life, now I'm back to the party scene and the club scene. My whole life is on the weekend I get drunk and dance with as many women or men as I can. And, and then we go do stuff and I hope I quote unquote score. And next week I'll repeat the whole action because that's what turns me on. Well, if that's been your life for quite a few years, it's just as addictive as homosexual behavior or any other behavior. You have to cry out to God, and, and, and he recognizes that. He talks about that. Um, he also talks about uh, the kind of particular risks there are for homosexuals in this sin. And the thing he says, oh, he also says there's much higher rates for substance abuse, suicide, depression, domestic violence, or an early death. On the way to this tonight, on the way in my car, I thought to say to one of you out there, and maybe it applies to many of you, if you're in a male, or even female, it could happen just that way, there's something about the homosexual relationships that I've been exposed to that seem to have a whole lot more drama than the regular hetero, not that there's not in hetero, but I'm just saying, whole bunch of drama, whole bunch of drama. And also control, threaten suicide if you leave me, violent if you think you're going to leave me, just a whole lot of mess. And I just want to say to you, especially if you're the feminine part in a male male, and the man is very, he can whoop the mess out of you. I'll just put it like it is. This is who I had a burden for on the way here. That person that's stuck in that you know what, I'll just tell you, I know our church, Robert and I would be willing to figure out a way, if you escape, you just have to promise though, not to tell the guy where you are. I helped a lady escape from an abusive guy one time, helped her with a whole bunch of, I was her welfare worker, her case worker, social worker, but it wasn't long, she asked the guy right back. So you need deliverance from the thing that keeps you bound. But if you really, really want to be free, I don't think we'd be the only pastors in town that would pray with you and see if we can figure out or the Lord can enlighten with some strategy to get you out of there just like they get women. Actually, I'm sitting here thinking that years ago I said to my supervisor at social services, Ken Van Lu, was, nope, that was Jim by then. Jim was asking me, what kind of services do you think that social welfare system needs to develop? And you know what? At that time, now I'm thinking it was mid-70s, I didn't know of one place we could send an abused woman to. And later, uh, the Y has a secret shelter. You can call, plus there was a program where they had a list of people where the women could go into the homes. So the problem with the program, Robert and I took somebody in, but there was no end. It was like it was possible they'd stay with us for the next 10 years, and that wouldn't have worked out real well either. So there has to be some organization. But I'm sitting here thinking our community needs a program for um, same-sex people that are being abused too because there might be some special needs going on. I mean, we're not going to take some guy probably into the abused women's shelter even though they have a common experience. I doubt seriously if they'd taken a guy with all those women in bedrooms and, well, he'd probably be really safe. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? That's something to pray about for the Christian community because, like I said, on the way here, I got a burden for the fact there's people out there that are in the same situation abused wives are in, only they're the feminine counterpart in a homosexual relationship. And I pray in Jesus' name right now, if that's you, or if you know somebody in that, that that person cries out to a Christian for help and that, he gets deliverance, or she, because it could happen then too, and be free from being in that. But he's mentioning too, there's a lot of domestic violence going on. And he says, because active homosexuals are trying to find something through gay relationships, check this, that can never be found there. When I came back from California, I wanted deliverance from that thing that wanted me to go to bars and be held and make out or whatever, whatever. And I got deliverance, and when that spirit came out, and I was adopted, so it explains some of it, but when the spirit, the demon came out of me back in 19, the 70s, it came out crying. I was crying tears, and it was just a strong force saying, Hold me, Daddy. That's how come I know to say to you, 
if you're in a relationship like that and your big deal is just being held and being loved by a man, maybe the issue is what he called love hunger and you got a demon like I did that's saying, hold me, hold me, hold me, and you're willing to pay any price to be held, to have the relationship, to have a man love you. But the fact is, because it's sin, because it's something God did not intend for any of us to do, that love hunger cannot be fulfilled through that relationship. It's absolutely impossible. Impossible. You can try to lie to yourself and say it is. All you're doing is lying to yourself. When a woman or a man has, um, what's that word? Progressive, um, serial relationships. What they're looking for is never fulfilled. In fact, you're further and further from the fulfillment because now your soul especially with a woman, has gone out to this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and now you're fragmented and you're broken and you're hurting and you just are not finding what you want. What you want is Father God's arms and love and acceptance and relationship. And from that vantage point, relate to other people. First John talks about because we have fellowship with the Father, we have fellowship with each other. When you look for fellowship directly with a human being, bypassing the relationship with God, it just cannot give you what you need. It just cannot. You will be empty. He says the term gay marriage is an oxymoron. It's an invention of broken man in defiance against the expressed desire and design of God for mankind. It's the fallen creature trying to tell the omniscient creator how things should be. If you got God telling us it's an unnatural use of our bodies to be with same sex, as he says in Romans 1. Now in Leviticus, it also says an abomination for mankind to lay with man as he lays with a woman. That's pretty clear. He didn't make us to do that. So you make gay marriage, which is becoming legal in many states. But just like abortion, just because it's legal doesn't make it right. Just because people make pot legal in Denver doesn't mean it's right to get stoned every night. You're supposed to be vigilant and sober and watchful and alive to do the work of the Lord. You're not supposed to get all stoned out of your mind. I don't care how legal things are. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Now, if you got a brain tumor and you're in excruciating pain, and instead of giving you a huge dose of Vicodin, they gave you marijuana, that's a whole different thing. I'm not going to have a tooth pulled without the Novocaine. You can forget about it. So I'm not talking about for cancerous pain. But this medical ma marijuana thing is a joke. You know it. I know it. And one of the guys that showed me his card told me it was so simple to get. It was ridiculous. Anyway, I got a little off track there. But, you, but we, the point is... We lie to ourselves about the sin that we're in, and we say it's all right when we really know better. Even if they make something legal, we still uh, know better. Okay, I want to remind you that a newly released documentary is out by this guy. Such were some of you. We need to see about seeing that movie. About so many that have been saved from homosexuality so that we can show it to those that are in sin. I'm going to tell you right now, if somebody's in sin and they don't think there's anything wrong with it, they already got a reprobate mind. And I feel sorry for them. God can do miracles. I always say as long as there's breath, there's hope. But it says in Proverbs 28, 4 to 5, they that forsake the law praise the wicked. So if they've already forsaken the ways of God, their heart is towards other people that have already forsaken. But such as keep the law, they struggle with the wicked. They contend with them. We try to help them see the wrong. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understands all things. That's why I'm telling you, diligently seek your creator, who will then become your Lord as you get to know him. It's, it can be tough. The warfare is tough like any other thing. But the Lord, like with this man, can completely 
deliver you out of homosexuality and any other sin. Seek him. Repent. Walk with Jesus. You'll be happier.